Now, the second reason that people often miss Christmas is because of familiarity. What I mean by that is you are so familiar with this story that you sort of aren't inspired by it anymore. The details don't bring all to you anymore. It doesn't amaze you anymore. You've heard it all before. You've celebrated Christmas your entire life. You know the story of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. You know the story of the shepherds. You know the story of the wise men. You know the story of the angels singing glory to God on the highest. You know the story. You know the songs. You know the traditions. And so maybe you get a little bit bored. Maybe your enthusiasm wanes. You can become so familiar with something that it doesn't really inspire or amaze you anymore. This mistake, the mistake of familiarity, was the mistake of another group of people in the days of Jesus' birth, and that is the religious people. The religious leaders missed the importance of Christmas because of the familiarity with the story. It is very interesting to me that God has come to earth in human form. The Son of God is being born. And in the story that's recorded in Luke and in Matthew, not a single religious leader is involved in the process at all. There are no priests. There are no scribes. There's no theologians involved really in the story. They all missed it. And they all missed it because they're so familiar with the story. Let me give you the picture as we, as we know it. The Bible tells us that there are these men from the east who see a star in the sky. And they see this unusual star in the sky, and they know that it portended, it it, it signaled that there was the birth of a new king. And so they were from the east, and they start heading from the east towards Israel. Now the truth is, we don't even know where they're from. It just says they're from the east. Now there's some scholars that think they're from the far east, like India or China. There are some people think, oh, they were just from the Middle East. And there are others that think, well, maybe they were even from Saudi Arabia. All we know is they were scholars. They studied the sky. They studied the stars. They see an unusual one. They see something unusual. They say, let's go check it out. That's what made them wise. Let's go check this thing out. And so these wise men take this long journey to a far off place. They go to Jerusalem and they arrange a meeting with a king. The king in Jerusalem is a guy by the name of Herod. King Herod. And they walk in, and the first question they ask is this. This is in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose in the east, and we have come to worship him. Now, Herod, who we'll get back to in just a moment, doesn't have the foggiest idea what they're talking about. He's the king of Israel, but he knows nothing about this. And so he calls in, in the middle of the night, all the religious leaders in Jerusalem and these scholars in Jerusalem, and he asks them, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? And the religious leaders know exactly what he's talking about. Without hesitation, they've been waiting for hundreds of years. They've been debating about it. They've been discussing it, detailing it, dissecting it, preaching all kinds of lessons about it. And they say this, in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. And they quote the exact scripture in Micah that is explaining it. They don't even hesitate. These religious people know exactly where the Messiah is supposed to be born. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's easy. You know, and they quote, oh, yeah, it's book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 4. Yep, in Bethlehem, that's where he's supposed to be, the Savior of the world. And yet they seem completely unimpressed by it all. They are talking about it, but they don't care enough to go check it out. And you stop and think about this for a second again. What they know is this. Some foreign dignitaries have come from a long way off. And they've come and somehow managed to have a meeting with the king. And the king has called you in and asks you about what they're talking about. And as a religious scholar, in the middle of the night, he's like, get in here. And you figure out something's going on here. These, you know, foreign dignitaries show up out of nowhere. There's an unusual star in the sky. Something special is happening. And I want to ask you, they don't want to even make a trip to Bethlehem to check these things out? You know how far it is from Jerusalem to Bethlehem? Five miles, maybe five and a half miles, roughly from here to the Parks Mall. You don't want to go check it out? You don't want to go just walk to the Parks Mall this afternoon? You could do that this afternoon. It would not take you more than an hour or two, even if you were walking fairly slowly. You don't want to go see what's happening. They don't want to go five miles. They wouldn't go five miles to check it out. Why? Because they are so familiar with this story. And because of their familiarity, their lack of curiosity is 
stunning. But the truth is, that can happen to you if you've been around Christianity long enough. You read the Bible enough, you go to church forever, you hear the Christmas story over and over and over again, and you become so familiar with it that you miss it. What had happened is that over the centuries, they kept waiting for the Savior of the world to show up. And what they did is while they're waiting, they're adding all of these traditions on. And more and more traditions and more and more traditions. So by the time Jesus arrives, they're focused more on their traditions than they were on God. And I want to say, does that sound vaguely familiar? What this holiday has become? Where we add traditions and traditions and traditions. You've got Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and then there's Frosty the Snowman. Now we've even got Elf on the Shelf, and we, we have all of these traditions. We sing songs, we put up decorations, we hear the story again, but yet what difference does it make? And if you don't know, then you're no better off than the religious leaders who 2,000 years ago missed the birth of Jesus because they were way too familiar with the story. Today, there are a lot of very intelligent people who will participate in every one of the Christmas traditions. They'll put up decorations, they'll put up lights, they'll send cards, they'll have a Christmas tree, they'll give gifts, they'll do every single tradition, yet they'll have no concern at all for the arrival of Jesus, God's Son, onto earth. God wants you to have a relationship with Him. That's what Jesus' birth signifies. God wants a relationship with you, and he wants you to have that through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you miss that, you've missed Christmas. You can put up lights, and you can still be in the dark. 